All right, and welcome back to the final video of my Dairyland series. All the other videos from here on out will be for the rest of my overseas trip. This is stage eight of the pro men's race. We are lucky enough, obviously I'm not riding in this race because I was doing the 2-3 category, but we're lucky enough to put the GoPro on the back of George Jackson's bike. And if you know anything about this race, he actually won this race. So stay tuned, this is going to be a good video. Um, unfortunately, George was actually going to do this voiceover with me. But he um, had to shoot off straight after the race the next morning. And obviously we all went out for beers and um, he had to go home pretty early and went to bed. Because he has the Commonwealth Games coming up. Um, he's doing, I think he's doing the scratch race on the track. So good luck for that, George. It would have been cool to have him on here so he could actually talk us through some of this. But it's going to be pretty sick to actually look at some of the power numbers that these pro guys do. Especially George. He was super, super active in this race. I think he did quite a few attacks. I think his average power was like 350 for this race, which is pretty crazy in a crit. Those type of numbers, like the numbers in these crits are so different that I worked out than in a road race. In like a normal flat road race with a couple of hills in it, a couple of descents and a lot of flat and a lot of time just consistently pedaling on the ground. You just, you do a lot. It's so much easier to average like 320 watts for an hour. Whereas 320 watts for an hour when all you're doing is you look, he goes up to 800 watts, and then you go bang down to like zero watts. There's so much consistent um, up, down, up, down. To hold 320 watts average, not normalized average, in one of these races is pretty outrageous. So it's um, going to be a pretty cool video. I did a couple of bike reviews just before this video. So I did one for the um, Cycle Project boys. That's Josh Burnett, the winner of the Queen Stage of Southland last year, um, right behind George there. And I also did one for the German team, uh, 5411 with Florence Nauda, who ended up winning the entire series. So definitely go check those videos out. So here, as you can see, George is doing one of his um, attacks around the back straight. Easily up to 1,200 watts to get the attack. And this is Hans behind him. I think he's one of the German like time trialists. Super, super fast. Every time, like as a spectator watching these races, every time you saw like one or two guys up the road, the German team puts this guy on the front and he pulls them back. He spent, I'd say he would have spent like 30 to 40 percent of the entire series sitting on the front of this pro men's field he was average power and his tss would have been through the roof but yeah as you can see a lot more attacks going the um project echelon boys probably had the biggest squad ethan crane um one of the palmy north boys um that i grew up locally riding with and i think i've got him doing cycle classic for team copelands which would be awesome to get that boy on the team um he's on that echelon squad he does a lot of the crits over here this series last year, he was riding for New England Devo, which was the team I was meant to be riding for. And um, he got picked up by Project Echelon, and they're um, based out of North Carolina, and he's been doing pretty well. So yeah, he averaged, he got second in the series last year. I think at this stage of the tour, that's one of his teammates attacking there. At this stage of the tour, he was sitting in about fifth or sixth um, position on the Omnium, which is pretty consistent. Like, first three days, he didn't miss the top five, which is pretty cool. As you can see, a break has gone up the road. George is chasing it back. That's the Hans guy. Um, then he's got the yellow jersey, which is Florence now behind him. And it's super, super narrow. And you kind of come around this bottom end of the corner. You can see it top, super tight. And then it flicks up onto one of these hills. And as you can see, we're back in the peloton now. That's Ethan Crane there. we also got another Kiwi, um, Zander White, there in the CS Velo kit. So there's so many Kiwi. I reckon that the amount of Kiwis would have almost equaled the amount of Americans in this thing. It was insane. There's definitely more international riders than there were actual American riders there with considering the amount of Kiwis and Germans we had. But yeah, you swoop up and you go up this like long climb, which is like it's, a, it's probably the longest climb that we had for like the crits. And, and like when you say climb, it's not a normal climb. You just like the first part of it's quite steep. So you do like a thousand watts up there is what George was telling me. And then they kind of like sit at like 500 to 400 the whole way to the corner. But yeah, it's super hard. Look at how punchy this climb is every single time they get out of it. Um, so that was quite a pinnacle part of the race, and I think that's what really kept the um, average power quite high for this one. And then you kind of swoop around at this top end, and then that comes down to the finishing straight. So you come around here. So obviously George is sitting quite away at the back at this stage of the race, probably done one of his attacks. And he's come right up past everyone. And we're getting probably the last, this is probably like the last 10 minutes of the race at this stage. That guy um, from Project Echelon, he's winning the Omnium at this stage. Or the, oh, the, uh, the the Sprint Point. That's the Sprint Point's jersey. So halfway through each of the stages, probably about 30 minutes in, they'll ring a bell and they'll have Sprint Points um, from the, the first person to the third person that crosses the line. And then a few of the races were outside the 
the cafe that sponsored the Sprint Points jersey, and then there'd be double points on those days as well. So yeah, there's a long downhill there, as you can see on the map at the top left, and then you swoop around this tiny little um, hairpin, and the whole thing you just um, you just spin around the corner, and then you just hit it out of this um, corner up this hill, and it's just it's a very very pinnacle part of the race. It's, I'd say that the race, like I did this one as well in the two threes, and the back side of the course is super narrow and technical, as you're about to see where we, they um, go through the finishing straight there, and they go through, it's like really easy through, pretty much from here, through all the way, you get to the bottom of that downhill, and then the uphill is where all of your power is done, it's just like easy, technical, you're just like worried about your lines, more worried about like making it around all these corners as fast as you can without touching the brakes, and then you just hit that climb, and it's just full gas every time so obviously we're getting towards the end of the race now and um florence has jumped on george's wheel by this stage of the tour we're like eight days into the 11 days florence has kind of realized that george is probably one of his biggest competition and george was on a flyer of a day today so he's jumped on george's wheel and i do have to make a disclaimer i don't have the the gopro cut off just before the last lap so we'll have to talk about the last lap i've got a photo of the the finish it's super exciting, um, but yeah, just kind of cool to see. George really does stay towards the front. Because it's such a technical course, he really does stay towards the front this entire last um, second to last lap. All of these guys are trying to get up the inside, and as you'll see, he's just kind of holding his ground. Theo Gilbertson comes up the right-hand side just before the end, and I'm pretty sure that's like the last person from George's team that really gives him a pull. You can see the yellow jersey kind of going up the left there. His team obviously going to lead out the last lap because they're the strongest team there by far. Theo just giving it as absolute all to come round. And then unfortunately, just before we get into the last turn, so they turn left here and they come through and there's the last lap. I'm not entirely sure what happened in the last lap, but George said he came into the last corner. He was about fourth wheel and he followed Florence and they were on complete opposite sides of the road to each other. And George had a 53.10 because he's running SRAM, and Florence had a 53, uh, 54 11. So they're very similar gears, but apparently George's was slightly bigger, and he just got him on the line. There's a photo of him also lifting his wheel up over the line. It was such an epic finish. I was screaming my lungs out watching him. Me and George have been our mates and riding for so long. It's so cool to see him um, winning at such a high level. So any um, UCI teams watching this and they want to sign George, um, hit me up and I'll give you his email. But thanks for watching this video, guys. Um, we're off to Spain in our next video. I've got a couple more days in Boston. And then we're off to Spain to join um, Keegan and Ari, and that's going to be some awesome. I've got some also some other like influencers and content creators that I'm going to be linking up with. So definitely stay tuned for that. Like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe to the Cycling Tom YouTube channel. Cheers, guys.